Zach Wilde just walked in. He's giving Jim a hug. What's going on, man? What are you doing, brother? How are you doing? I'm doing good. What's happening, guys? Good to see you. Right back at you. You smell really good. What kind of cologne is that? It's a new black label septic tank. <laughs> <laughs> it's very good. Thank you, my brother. And you look, uh, you look thin. Is that on purpose? Um, no, it's uh, just uh, balancing out White Castle and Jenny Craig. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. So are you trying to lose weight or no? <laughs> but anyways... So no. what else is shaking, man? I'm good. I'm really good. But you you look really thinner than I've ever seen you look before. I feel I feel like a sexy rock mutant boy. That's what I feel. You like. are a sexy rock mutant boy. That's what I tell the wife <laughs> all the time. <laughs> but did you get to a point like because I don't know for a while you had some health issues and now you seem like you're doing a lot better. Did you get to a point where you got like a wake up call like fuck man I I gotta stop what I'm doing. No, never. No, <laughs> no. I, no. I just because people would always go like this. Oh, you don't drink anymore. I go no, and I go good for you. I go no, bad, bad for me do you miss it no not at all i mean like you know i got buddies that uh well you know we all do you all, you all got your friends that are just like i'm like jim did you see tom he said he's like you know he hasn't had a drink in like eight months and you're like zach i saw him two weeks ago over mcsorley's <laughs> blasted out of his mind i go oh well that's what i thought you know no but i'm just saying whether either on again off again on again off again no i just no i, I got blood clots and then you know i, I told the doc i said I said, Doc, does this mean I got to, like, chill out on the sauce? He just goes, well, Zach, I don't mean to be Debbie Downer over here, but uh, he goes, let me ask you something. He goes, did you did your parents have this, by the way? I go, oh, I wouldn't know. I go, they're both up in God's Tavern, so I can't. I can't, I can't tell you for sure. He goes, and Barb was with me at the time, right? And, you know, the immortal beloved. And she goes, he goes, Zach, as a doctor, I don't know how to say this, but all your years of drinking may have saved your life. And I go, see, drinking is good for something. You know, but needless to say, there was no, uh, there was no laughter from the peanut gallery at that point. But, well, how did uh, it save your life? But no, he just, he just told me, he goes, Zach, he goes, look, I'm looking at your, your this is when I was 42, because I'm 50 now. So he just goes, uh, I'm looking at your liver count and your pancreas count. He goes, I'm telling you right now, Zach, with the way you go berserking with the fellas and you, the way you tell me you drink every day, he goes, Without a doubt, you'll have to have a liver transplant before you're 45. And he goes, um, he goes, I'm just looking at numbers. You know what I mean? He goes, like, a, on a gas tank. He goes, you know, with that double duel you got over there, if you're driving from L.A. to Vegas on a quarter of a tank of gas, it, there's, you won't make it. You just you just won't. Right. So he goes, uh, he goes, and then the pancreas, he goes, guys, he goes, we're getting better with the livers. He goes, but it's still a pain in the ass, Zach. He goes, or the pancreas, guys either die on that table or they... They could say goodbye to everybody they know in about four days, and but they don't leave here. And he goes, or door number three, you can, you know, fist yourself silly while you're listening to Led, your Led Zeppelin records and your Black Sabbath albums and uh, hang out with your wife and your kids and your dogs and all your buddies. And I was like, well, I definitely love Jimmy Page. And I <laughs> definitely love the fisting aspect. <laughs> and definitely hanging out with the wife and the kids and the dogs and my buddies. I'll take door number three. So, yeah, that was the end of the line. That was it. He told you you had to stop and that was the, there was no... How'd the blood clots form, though? Because I remember you were wearing like those pantyhose or whatever, those tight things that kind no, of... No, like, yeah, I still wear them. You know, like you the, uh, yeah, no, the, 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 you know, like the sock things, you know what I mean? Just to keep, uh, you know... The blood compression. Blood. Take, yeah, 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 the compression socks. But I mean... No, I just I got to take a blood thinner in the morning. Then I take one before night. You know, along with the, uh, you know, the black label Viagra. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's a daily routine. Does it fuck you up though? Because blood thinners they say can mess up your erections. Did that uh, that's what really scared me. Is it? Cause they well, said, you figured if it's thinning your blood, right? Yeah, exactly. But uh, no, I, I no problems there, man. So you know, I, that's why I said between the. The Valhalla Java Odin Force blend fortified with man root domination juice in there as well. So, uh, you take something to balance that out. Yeah, exactly. You know, like I said, with the White Castle and the Jenny Craig, you know what I mean? It's, it's a fine balancing act. Did he actually say that, uh, that the drinking helped save you? Um, well, it obviously was thin in my blood all those years. Right. You know what I mean? Because that's what, that's what booze is. Wow. You know? So, but I mean, but he, but he was just making it cracking a joke. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I mean, what it is though, it does kind of make sense though. You it know does. what I mean? If, if I did have it genetically from my mom and dad, you know what I mean? If I was predisposed with it. Obviously, I was basically taking blood thinners <laughs> <laughs> since I went to Ozzy Osbourne University. <laughs> that was the best because when I first joined the band, I were over in England working on the record. I remember mom, Sharon, 
calls up Barbara Ann at the time. And, you know, because I said she's been like my mother since I've been 19 years old, since I joined the band, right? So she calls up Barb and goes, excuse me, Barb Ann, does, does Saki have a drinking problem? You know, because I would be the only one that would hang out with the boss. No, no one would hang out with him, you know, because everyone would be obviously in fear of their job as well, you know, because it's just like, you know, as if your wife knows I'm hanging out with you and I'm enabling Father yeah. Jim, you know, while we're drinking sauce, you know, she's like, who's getting Jim drinking again? It's like, oh, well, Zach's hanging out with Jim all the time, going to the Irish pubs. It's like, then I'm out of the picture, you know what I mean? Right. So, so no one would want to hang out with you, you know, except because, for me. Because Sharon would see them as a bad influence. Well, right. Without a doubt. So here I am, and I remember BT, God bless his soul, BT was around with Oz since, known him since the 70s, and then when he started with St. Rhodes and, you know, started his solo career. <laughs> but I remember BT when I was rooming with him, he goes, Zacky, Zacky, don't get caught in the web. Stay out of the web. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> he goes, he's bringing you into the web. And I was like, but I love us. I want to hang out with the boss. You know what I mean? So Did you stop? No. It was just like, yeah, we're the gruesome twosome. So, I mean, it was just like no one would hang out with him except for me. You know how what did, I mean? so How did you survive the wrath of Sharon? Oh, my. <laughs> I don't know. It just, I, I, you know, I was kind of, she just let me hang around. But I mean, it was just like, I guess she was like, well, somebody's got to hang out with them. But I mean, but, uh, but no, it was just like, she, I remember she called Bob and she goes, does Zachy have a drinking problem? She goes, oh, no, no, no. She goes, well, he does now. <laughs> yeah, because obviously, obviously two weeks with the boss, I'm already just boozing it like it's nobody's business. But uh, no, it just, um, yeah, you know, I mean, as far as with the drinking, though, I mean, it's just like that was the end of the line. I mean, I just always tell everybody it was a good time, man. You, you had know, a I good mean, run. Yeah, dude, I won a couple Super Bowls, went through about 10 <laughs> Pro Bowls. I mean, what kind of, had a Hall of Fame career. I mean, I, I'm not complaining. You just move on to the next phase. Now we're team owners. You you're know you're like mean? the Tom Brady of alcoholism. You had a great <laughs> <run>. <laughs> So you, uh, and you guys, you went back with Ozzy for the first time in a long time. You guys just toured. And I, I didn't see you guys, but it was like now you're both sober. You're, uh, both, yeah. you're both on the road, not drinking. So was that any different? Is that the first time you guys have yeah, done this? Yeah, because looked at me, and I looked at him, and I go, who are you? He goes, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> and I go, and what are we doing? You know what I mean? Yeah, do you guys still, like, hang out socially, or do you both realize that if you're hanging out socially, you're both going to want to drink because that's what you did with each other? Yeah, now we just go to, you know, like Caligula whorehouses now and stuff like that, you know, but we're sober, you know what I mean? So, yeah, but uh, just, you know, for arts and crafts and right, stuff sure, like that, of course. you know? But uh, Is it weird being on the road without doing it, though? Because if you do it your whole life and, like, that's what you do on the bus and that's what you do yeah. before the show and after the show, it's like, what do you do to fill the time now that you're not doing that? No, I, put it this way. I mean, you know, the way I always look at it, you know, and... You just don't drink anymore because it's just like, and I always tell, you know, well, exact, would you want to go to like talk to kids at rehabs or whatever? I go, yeah, I don't care. I go, it does. I go, put it, this, put it this way. But there's nothing really that needs to be said. It's just like, good. Have a good time all the time. And then once it starts getting a little silly, you just go, all right, and that's the end of that. <laughs> and I, mean, I don't know what else to tell you. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, that's it. It's like, it can't be that easy. I go, no, it is. I'll show you how to play Stairway to Heaven. You got to practice. I don't know what more to tell you. So that's it, pretty much it. I so don't know. You, you didn't have that, like, uh, the, you didn't have to go through the 12 steps or do the. No, I, and I got buddies and... at that do AA and they still go and they're like, dude, it's not like I didn't even need it. I just have my buddies there and I have friends there and we just go and have a good time, you know? And then we go to a Caligula brothel and just <laughs> have a blast. But right. I mean, but the whole thing is, uh, no, I mean, my whole thing is, you know, I remember when I, when I first, you know, when we, first stop drinking or whatever or me but you know any of the fellas but it was just like oh make sure there's no booze in this hotel room or there's no booze on the side i go listen if i find out who ended up taking booze out of my mini fridge because they think i'm a weak willed candy ass i will bash your brains in a bunch i find out who did it so i said i suggest if you don't like ending up in the icu for about several to you know months at a clip, I suggest you keep the sauce in the mini fridge because I mean now now it's, it's a now you're it's a question of my manhood at that point you know you know what I'm saying so you took it as a challenge almost well yeah you just yeah. like go you know I mean you're gonna let it beat you or you're gonna 
you know, if you don't like losing, then you ain't gonna lose. Right. So you know, you you just go. It's no problem. But I, I don't wake up, I don't wake up like Jones and for a cocktail or anything like that. The the Caligula brothels definitely. But I mean the 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 booze now. It's just that that was Tuesday. Today's Wednesday. All right, what time are we on stage? All right, let's go do this. I mean, that's the way I've always looked at it. Right. I mean, it's just like if you know we're pitching or whatever. We're in a game. I'm. Father Jim, I'm your catcher. You give up a home run in Game Seven of the World Series. We're in the first inning, and you're gonna sit around walking around with your head down, kicking the dirt. I'm like, I just walk out to the mound. I go, first off, don't ever, ever put your head down, ever. And then second off, we got like eight more innings to go, bro. I go, and we'll get the runs back. So don't worry about it. That just happened. Actually, who cares? Can you get the rest of these guys out? I mean, that's you just have to. So you don't you, dwell like you're not a guy who dwells on the all. past. No. You're an insecure and, guy. Like, yeah, I, I mean, stuff. yeah. You just, just go, do your shit, move on to the next. Yeah, thing. yeah. That was Tuesday. Today, Wednesday. Let's go. That's you a pretty I mean? practical and good yeah. attitude to have. I mean, you don't get caught up in like, like, say you and your wife fight. You have an argument about something. Are are you are you good at going and apologizing, or if she apologizes, are you good at going? All right. We're done, and that's no, cool. No, definitely. Even during the boozing days, you know, I mean, it's just like if we if if something got a little silly, I'd be the first one to say I'm sorry and stuff like that. So you know, yeah, just get it over with, and then forget about dwelling on anything. It's like water to a duck, man. You just gotta, you know, just say you're sorry, and then let's get moving here, man. You don't so, harp. You don't harp on mistakes that she's made. You're like, all right, yeah. yeah I, I, who wants I, to carry that garbage around? I carry that weight around, man. It sucks. Because the minute you say you're sorry and you go, uh, which you really are anyway, so, you know, and then you just move on. So do you think you got and then, there? And then you can get back to the fondling of the genitalia anyway, so you know <laughs> what I mean? Which is a lot more fun. Do you, would you think that that's how you got there, that you realized from a young age, like, there's a lot of fun shit to do in life? Like, if you're 19 and you're playing with Ozzy, like, you're like, the life can be a lot of fun. I'm not going to dwell on anything except for the great stuff that is right here in front of me. Yeah, and I, I think it's all I, I think it's all perception too. You know, like even when we had when we were drinking, if you only had half a beer left, I didn't look at it as the half is the glass is half empty. It's just like it's half full, and if we drink it fast enough, we'll cop a decent buzz. So you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. so, so you see what I'm saying? It's just yeah. perception. We man. still got half a beer right there. We still got half <laughs> yeah. a beer instead of going, man, what a bummer. We only got half a beer. It's right. like. No, if you look at it on the other side, right, yeah, it we, is still half a beer, <laughs> and if we drink it fast enough, we can use this for like, its good. If you look at it from the other side, you can still get an, a little buzz going. Well, yeah, just look at Captain America in the Super Bowl last year. It's just like, well, we're getting crushed right now. It's like, yeah, but we still got 30 minutes to come back and win this thing. Right. So there you go. That's an, I've never seen all the years I've been talking to you or known you. I've never seen you anything other than this. I've never seen you angry, um, you know, even backstage. I've never seen you bitch at anybody. You always seem to be very even keeled and, and, and upbeat. And well, I mean, definitely. I mean, in, in the past, you know, when you when you look at yourself, when you get pissed off about things or whatever, when you go, God, I mean, well, it's almost kind of like high school stuff where you go, I can't believe like, I even got bummed out about that. You know what I mean? Or whatever. Or like Julie Thompson breaking up with you, you know? And you go, what was I thinking, man? Like, like really? And I go, well, she did have some pretty slamming gazongas. <laughs> Jim, <laughs> fuck yeah. yeah. Go, yeah, I know. So I go, and you def never did get a chance to fondle them at the Caligula whorehouse, you right. know? So, uh, no, but you, you really think about it, man. I mean, it's just like, next. You, you know did, what I mean? Did you get into fights when you were in high school? Um, because it seems like this attitude would would lead you to not getting into. Well, I used to get into arguments because some guys would just be like, "Look at your fish nets; they don't even match your high heels." You know, what <laughs> it's I mean? hurtful, like, isn't it? Yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> that I'd be sucks, like, "Screw man. you, Frank." You know, what I mean, so you know, you're just jealous, bro. You know, what I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, certain things like that. I'd get into arguments over that. Yeah. Sure. Oh, all right. Wait a minute. Now, are, are these pressurized socks that you're wearing, or are they actually full? Or they go all the way up? How high do they go? These things. Um, I I usually wear them straight till it goes to the uh, the testicles to. To keep me hold, held on so I can actually hold out for longer than the six minute black label love barrier. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I can, yeah, so I'm not a complete embarrassment. Oh, yeah, I do yeah. love that everything's branded. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I respect that. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's awesome. Zach's promoting uh, Gimme Hits. It's a new Black Label Society album. It's out January the 19th. So you have a little Grimace while. Hits. Oh, Grimace. Sorry, I said Gimme. Yeah, Grimace the record hits. company's like, are there any hits? I go, 
No, I got grim news. No, there, <laughs> there, there are no hits. I, so now you already know going in. Grimmest yeah. hits. Uh, it, it's the new album. It's out January. You, uh, you, you left hey, In order to make a greatest hits, you have to have hits. Right. right. We don't have any. Right. Because <laughs> we prefer to keep the band, the people's band, and not sell out. You see, because this way, if you don't have any hit songs, you're still true to the music. <laughs> Well, that's the way we like that. That's what you tell yourself. Pawn it off. <laughs> yeah, that's what you like to think, right? <laughs> well, at least we're true to ourselves, man. Do you, uh, uh, one of my favorite things that you've ever done is the film Rockstar. I can't tell you. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm not, I, that is like, I don't know what it is about that thing. I watch it probably at least six times a year. I think, I think Father Mark Wahlberg and, <laughs> and Sister Jen over there, when they signed up for this movie, they were like, and what did I sign up for here? Dude, that's that's <laughs> now, part of the appeal. I go like, how did this movie get made? I have no idea either. All I know is when they, they ask me to do it, they go, well, what is it you want me to do? And they go, well, you can basically just play guitar all day, and then we'll have you shooting a gun at some point, you know, in a thing, and then drinking booze. I go, and you're going to pay me for this? <laughs> I was like, okay. You know, no, but I mean, it was it was a great time making that thing. I mean, Mark's super cool. Jen's super cool. I mean, everybody everybody on that movie was, and I'm, I'm buddies with, you know, all the guys that were in the band and everything like that. So, I mean, uh, it was just like a massive summer camp for the whole time we were making the movie. It so really it was is. Good time. Awesome. Did you have to, you had, they, they made you shave for that movie though, right? Yeah, every day I had to shave, man. So and, and then what happened was at the end of the movie, which never ended up in the movie, there was a thing of, where are they now? So they did of like when the band broke up and the band was no longer or whatever. And I had a thing where I basically had a beard on and uh, I ended up like I wasn't in music anymore. I just lived in the woods somewhere and I was just like hunting my own food and stuff like that. And I just had a big beard and everything like that. And I was like, I remember when we had to put the thing on every day, I would go, dude, I think I'm going to grow a beard when I get done with this movie, you know, because I had to shave every day and stuff like that. Yeah. So uh, it was at that point I said... I want to look this ridiculous. I'm going to do it. <laughs> do you so, like the beard? Yeah, so that but, was about it. So I mean, it was after Rockstar that you were like, I'm just never shaving again. Yeah, so, and, and you ought to see the genitalia and the ass hair. <laughs> <laughs> the, wife, the wife, it takes her about, it's a production, it takes her about a half an hour to get in there. You know what I mean? So, That's a real yeah. mess, huh? It's a horror show. She's in, she's locked in. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did, uh, did, was there any point that, like, uh, Jennifer Aniston was going like, do you... What are we doing here? What, I it, think the whole entire movie yeah. she was just like friends to this. <laughs> yeah, wow, that's... I must not like myself too much because that was I mean? her first. Like Jennifer Aniston at the time that movie came out, it was like Friends was the biggest had been the biggest show on TV, and it was like yeah, but she's a movie star too, and it's like to a certain audience, like the movie Rockstar is like it's kind of like the Judas Priest story. I think they must have drugged Mark and Jen to get them <laughs> into this movie, and then it was just like the movie was over, and they were like, and they were at the premiere going, "What did I do? I was in this." <laughs> you know, so no, but uh, like I said, I mean it was. I, I thought I mean it was a good time and I mean the, mo the movie's like there's a lot of funny stuff in that movie so I mean it's have you like, watched it back? I, actually, I mean it's like amazing. I mean it's just like I see it a lot of times either on airplanes. Yeah, it's on. It's on and TV then, all the time. Yeah, and then you'll see it on like you know TBS or you know you see it like you know the 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 Sunday morning movie or whatever it is. But you know, uh, yeah, it's pretty funny. It's like this little cult thing now. So I mean, it's fucking it's just, awesome. Uh, but I yeah, I run into people all the time. They're like, dude, that movie's like hysterical. So have you seen it, Jim? I have, but I, it's like in bits and pieces. I've never seen the entire thing all the way. Good through. for you, kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just bits and pieces I've seen here and there. I've never watched the entire thing. That's in between fondling, fondling the man root and just <laughs> blasting away. You know, it's just I caught a little and I had to get back. Yeah, to sometimes I'll right. stop edging, turn on a film for a little while. <laughs> it might be on at the Caligula whorehouse. You <laughs> That's know what right. I mean? That's right. You yeah. like Caligula, don't you? It's a great film. <laughs> Without a doubt. He's a great fella. <laughs> Great fella. <laughs> very caring, very giving guy. <laughs> you, now you are, he wanted you, everyone to have a good time, basically. He really did know how to throw a party. Not a good <laughs> oh wedding guest. God, yeah. Not a good wedding guest. <laughs> no. No, he wasn't one for tradition. No, he oh. was not. Yeah. <laughs> well, he wanted to bless them. Caesar's blessing. Just let it all he hang did. out. He did. <laughs> well, you know, they shot the hardcore sex stuff in that at night, so the the actors in that movie had no idea what they were doing. Like, uh, you know... Uh, um, <laughs> they thought they were in Rockstar. They really didn't know. They, Malcolm McDowell, John Gilgood, they just, they're doing this film about ancient Rome, and he's filming these hardcore fuck scenes after they leave. 
And they had no idea that there was hardcore pornography mixed in. <laughs> Yeah, it's great. That'd it was an Aussie f- after show party. Yeah. That's, what it was. That's what I think they were now, telling them. Yeah, if you thought uh, if you thought Jennifer Aniston was surprised <laughs> at the premiere of Rockstar, imagine Malcolm McDowell showing up at the premiere of Caligula. <laughs> like what? Yeah, yeah. What? There's you a guy blowing what? another guy back there. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> didn't they do like all the all the sex scenes and stuff? That's they did in the middle of the night. Yes, yeah. they did them when they when the actors were not there. So they would walk through a particular orgy scene, and it, you know, it'd be shot like a rated R movie. And then Guccione and those guys would shoot really hardcore sex. It came out great, but there's a R version and then there's the X version. And the X version is really erotic. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. It's basically a porno movie with movie stars. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the one that we don't show to the eighth graders. <laughs> yeah, you know, when they want to show them about Rome. Yeah. In the Roman history class, we stick with the <laughs> R-rated Caligula. But that's probably the most, I would say that's probably the most accurate look at what a Roman dictator was like. Like they had uh, Tiberius Caesar played by Peter O'Toole. He was like into like little kids and fucking... Uh, and with the way uh, Caligula tied off that guy's dick and fed him wine and then stuck a sword in him, like oh, that's yeah, probably man, what without most... a doubt. Hey. Another good times. <laughs> do, you, do you ever get worried with all the uh, sexual misconduct uh, allegations being thrown around these days? Do you get worried that like uh, groupies from the past or any of the of the old school rock days are going to come back to haunt you? Well, I remember a couple incidents. You know, with uh, I remember the early the Animal House years of Black Label. I remember these two girls were in the sub at the time. I guess they were hanging out with some of the guys either in the band or in the Doom Crew Incorporated. So, uh, but I was in there just hanging out in the sub. It was after the after the big rock show, and uh, I was like, "Hey, girls, how you doing? Can I get you guys something to drink or whatever?" They're like, "No, oh, no, okay." And they were all giggling and stuff. I was like, "I was like, what?" I go, "All right, what's so funny?" Because I was bending over getting something to drink. I was like, "I figured my." pants busted open or something like that she goes no but you know we used to have posters of you back in the day you know with the big poofy hair when i was when i first started with the boss with us so it was just like i go oh yeah i go i go that's probably the last time my wife actually wanted to actually sleep with me you know what i mean she goes because now i'm out on the couch and they they just go uh, and they were all giggling some more and they go i go all right so what's up and they go man you know we you know what we do to you and i'm waiting to hear like some Caligula brothel yeah, stuff, yeah. you know what I mean? And then some good time stuff. So some stories I could tell Barb about or, you know, say, you know, these two two hot chicks were on the sub and they wanted to do this to me. So maybe you could try it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, so, but they, they were just like, I was like, what would you do? And I go, we think you have such a hot ass. We'd love to put strap-ons on and just blast you up the ass and i just go well now you know why i don't cheat on my wife you know what i mean so you know, but it was like, and i remember this one other time i remember uh, i remember with the boss i think we first of all can i just say that that's my dream scenario you just mentioned <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's another good time out you know what i mean but uh just want to make sure you don't eat a heavy meal before that one. right you know, don't you don't want to hit a big steakhouse after that one with the fellas you know but uh but the whole thing is, and if you do, just maybe just get the fish, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah you don't want to have a disaster that night, yeah. you know, but... Uh, but what was the other time with Oz? I remember with Oz, we were hanging out in, uh, I think we did like McNichols Arena or something like that, and I remember <laughs> we're, in a, we're in a steam shower, I had that thing going on, Oz is sitting down, and I'm sitting down, and the steam was like kicking in, and we're just like chilling out, and just talking, and just relaxing, and Oz goes, these two girls actually came into the shower, and they saw us sitting there, they're like, oh, sorry, and then they left, right? And then Oz looks at me, and I look at him, and he goes, Zach, you know what those girls just thought? And I was like, what's that, Oz? He goes, eh, she, they both took one quick look at my dick, and they just said, look at that thing. I guess I'll put it behind my ear and smoke it later. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, yeah, these were the opportunities me and the boss <laughs> used to get back in the It's like, yeah, did you cheat on your wives at all? Well, no, with opportunities like that, no. It's, yeah. they, they just went yeah. in the back room and whacked it off. Is she like bumps. your high school sweet star- sweetheart? I mean, you, you, I mean, yeah, it's I've, known, actually, I've known my wife since sixth grade. Wow. And then we went to go see the Urban Cowboy movie. Travolta, I took her yeah. to that, yep, and she wouldn't let me, uh, I got the I got the lockdown. I went, I went to go up her uh, shirt. And I got the, uh, I got shut down, and she wouldn't let me pass the red, you know, the red rope there into Studio Fifty Four, and I, uh, I dropped it like a bad habit on Monday, <laughs> and then after that, so when we started high school, uh, I remember she went with the uh, the gym teacher's son. He was a year older than us, Rick Keller, and I remember, uh, so she went with him for about three years, and then uh, I remember like when we had the band going, yeah, you know, Rick would be like, hey, Barb. You know, Zach's got his band together. Let's go see him. You know, we'd be playing, you know, 
Ozzy, we'd be playing, you know, whatever, Cream, Rush, Hendrix, you know, Sabbath and stuff like that. She goes, she goes let's go see him. They're playing at, like, Ketchum's Kitchen tonight. Or, you know, we're playing at some keg parties. You go, now nah, he's an asshole. I wouldn't go to anything by him. So <laughs> she still says that a lot. But, I mean, but the whole thing is uh, senior year of high school, we had the same class, I think, like, business class or something like that. So, but I remember, like, hanging out with her all the time, cheating off her tests all the time. And then we started hanging out. And then... Since that day forward, I've had no problems getting past the red rope and into Studio 54, <laughs> and here we are with four kids later. That's yeah. amazing to me, though, like, like, and they're telling us that Zach has to wrap up. Uh, it's amazing to me that, like, all of a sudden the girl doesn't like you, and she's like, fuck him, I don't want to see him. It's like you never know. Like, just because someone isn't into you at one point doesn't mean they're not going to come back around. And people ask me, they're like, exactly. I mean, do you ever get jealous, you know, with Barb, with her, her past boyfriends or anything? Like, you know, she went with this Wick Keller guy. And Rick is married now and has it with her best friend and all this other stuff. It's hysterical. But I mean, but the whole thing is, uh, yeah, she was with Rick for three years. And I'm like, no, not at all. I said, I think it's awesome. I go, every time she's destroying me and fondling the man root and pounding on the genitalia, oh, doom. I just go, thank you, Rick Keller. Thank you, Rick Keller. <laughs> That's her training ground, bro. You know what I mean? So she took, you know, three years of hardcore, intense training, yeah. and, I, and she's, like, amazing. I, I have nothing but great things to say about Father So you Father appreciate Rick. Rick's earlier work? Without a doubt. He's yeah. amazing, and I thank him, and I write him thank you letters all the time. What a great attitude to have. He's the best. He's, he's amazing.